Hello, this is the next video in a series I'm calling General Linear Models Design of Experiments. And this is the third video in a little mini series that I'm calling Estimability. In this video, we're going to look at the Gauss Markov theorem. As a reminder, we're in the setting where we have a model y equals x beta plus epsilon, where the mean of epsilon is zero, constant variance sigma squared, covariances between any two epsilon is zero. Theorem four, now theorems one, two, and three were in parts two, you know, one and two. So we're on theorem four, and we're going to look at the variance of this estimable function. So let's assume that lambda prime beta is estimable, and beta tilde is an least squares estimate for beta, right? Because we're in the setting where the design matrix is not of full column rank, and so there's an infinite number of least squares estimates for beta. And so that's why it's an estimate. Then the variance of this estimate, or the, of lambda prime beta, is equal to this where the tilde the dash is the generalized inverse matrix so the proof is this since lambda beta is estimable by theorem one a row exists such that you know taking it a linear combination of the rows of the design matrix equals lambda and that's for some row so the variance of our least squares estimate becomes this so what we do is we the least squares estimate for beta is this piece here then on this step we replace lambda with rho prime x right by theorem one that's true then from x to x transpose that's what we were calling m it's the perpendicular projection matrix onto the column space of x now when you take the variance of this the stuff out front is brought out front and it's actually transposed out back and it and then we have this and i have a a video on random vectors and random matrices you know taking the mean and the variances of each of those if you want more detail now here the variance of y is sigma squared i so that constant can come out front the i times m is just m but m times m since m is a is idempotent that's just m so we get it back now we replace or we you know we expand m which is this but then this rho transpose x and the x uh, transpose rho we get this so to make there needs to be a transpose there you can't really hardly see it and that's what we wanted to show the, the theorem is proven now really the big theorem in this video is theorem 5 the Gauss Markov theorem that says you know assuming that we're in the model above ie the general linear model with standard assumptions the, and the least the least squares estimate of this estimable function is lambda prime beta tilde so this is the least squares estimate of beta and this estimate is the blue of this estimable function now blue stands for best linear unbiased estimator and it's the because it's unique and we will prove that so from theorem three we know that lambda prime beta tilde is the unique unbiased estimator of lambda prime beta but remember best in the in the blue part the linear means it's a linear combination unbiased estimator blue means it has the smallest variance so that's really the the, the piece of gauss markov that's important so from theorem four we know the variance of this linear combination is this and that should be a tilde right if it were beta it's a constant then it's zero so it has to be an estimator so it has a variance so this that's the variance 
And then let's let a prime y be an arbitrary linear unbiased estimator of lambda prime beta. Then from theorem 1, we know an a exists such that this is true. a prime x is equal to lambda prime. Now, the variance of a prime y, remember you have to take the a out front and you transpose it out back. So you get this. And then this is uh, sigma squared i. So the sigma squared comes out front and the i just kind of goes away. So this is the variance of any linear unbiased estimator. So next, we want to show that this result holds. And if this holds, meaning the variance of our least squares estimate is smaller than any other linear un unbiased estimator, then it's, then it's A blue, right? And that's the equal sign is in there too. It could be that there's another linear unbiased estimator like this one that has equal variance and then it would be zero. But if we just generically show this, then we know it's A blue, and then we're almost finished with the proof. So let's look at this variance and plug in what we know for each of these. Now, because it's estimable, this lambda we said was, was A prime X. So we plug that in for both of those, and this piece just comes down. Now let's left factor out a sigma squared and an a prime, and then right factor out an a. So, oh, actually before we do that, we note that this is m. That's the perpendicular projection matrix on the column space of x. Then at this step, we left factor out and right factor out a's, and we get this. Now, i minus m is it's a perpendicular projection matrix onto the orthogonal complement space of the column space of X. So it's idempotent and it's symmetric. So we can multiply this times itself and we can add a tick. And the, and the transpose or the tick doesn't change it because it's symmetric. But we do this now, we can kind of unfold that transpose into this. And then this piece just comes down, sigma squared comes down. And notice it's this same vector in both cases, and when you take that vector product, it ends up being the, the sums of squared things. Well, it has to be non-negative, greater than or equal to zero, which then proves that lambda prime beta tilde is a blue, right? It's, it's at least the best in terms of smallest variance lin linear unbiased estimators. Now, we haven't proven uniqueness yet, but one other note that right here, we could have gone from here to here because idempotent matrices are positive semi-definite. And so instantly we could have known this. Um, oh, can idempotent matrices be full rank? And the answer is no. There's only one idempotent matrix that's full rank, and that's the identity matrix. All other idempotent matrices are not full rank. All right, so we have just shown that lambda prime beta tilde is a blue of this estimable function. So let's, just, let's look at where it equals. So let's say that these two variances equal. What does that tell us about a prime y? So note that when these two equal, Right? which we, we were in this setting, that says that this vector has to be zero. Because if you're adding squared things, the only way that you can add to zero is if, you're, if each component is zero. So this vector has to be zero. Now we can multiply the n in and then add the m over, and we get to this point, a equals m a. Now let's look at this linear combination, right? Because that's ultimately what we want. We want to find the variance of this, to, or, or the structure of A prime Y. So we're here. Now we just said that A was M A, right? Now here there's a transpose. Here there's a transpose. Here there's not. So you got to make sure you transpose it. Now. M is this, that's the perpendicular projection matrix.
and m times y like well, we could have gone from here to here because my is actually x beta tilde that's one of the requirements of the least squares estimates that x times it is unique and it equals my then but ax Oh yeah, AX because of theorem one is lambda, right? It's estimable. So thus, whenever the variance is equal, that says this linear combination has to be the least squares estimate for this estimable function. So it is a blue. So thus this uh, estimate, least squares estimate, is the unique blue of this function. Now one note though, I encourage you to go back and watch a video that I have multiple linear regression uh, least squares estimates of betas or blues. And it's in my playlist general linear models regression and in that video X has full column rank and every linear combination is estimable so we didn't have to worry about that. And just so you can see the differences in the proofs. Well, that's all I have for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.